This is a new resin printer that just got on the market this week. It is the new Anycubic Mono SE. It has a 2K resolution screen and is a resin based technology 3D printer. So that means a powerful UV light from below will expose to an LCD screen the resin, which will then solidify and create a 3D object. This printer has a monochrome screen, which is advertised as 4 times more durable than a normal LCD. This printer is 3 times faster, they say, has a 2K resolution screen of 6 inch or 152mm. It should last over 2000 hours of use. It has Wi-Fi connection, metal frame, strong and thick metal rails for the Z-axis, is very easy to calibrate the printing support, has a very nice design and a decent touchscreen. The printer comes together with the Anycubic slicing software, which already has the Mono SE slicing settings integrated, so just import the STL file, then slice, paste that on the SD card and print. But as you already know, printing with resin could get quite messy, so make sure that you use an air filter mask and gloves, and have patience. So let's see what you receive with this printer. Talk about the main specs and the printing results, which spoiler alert are quite good. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. We have a new resin 3D printer on the market, the Anycubic Mono SE. So let's start with the specs, then we see what you receive with this kit and finally how to use it and the test results. So to control this printer we have a 3.5 inch color TFT touchscreen, which is quite easy to use. And for printing we have a USB memory stick input, which I prefer than an SD card but we also have Wi-Fi connection, which in my case I never use. The printing technology is screen shadow masking, meaning that the monochrome screen will create the mask for each shape of the layers, and using UV light from below, with a wavelength of 405 nanometers, we solidify the liquid resin above. To level the printing bed, this printer has a ball pressure leveling, meaning that the bed could move freely in all directions, and when the bed is leveled, you tie the screw here and we are good to go. The X and Y resolution is given by the screen, which is a 2K one, of 2560 by 1620 pixels. And the Z axis accuracy is given by the step motor, and the lead screw as well, which in this case is 0.01mm. The layer thickness of the prints could go from a maximum of 0.15mm to 0.01mm, and with this you can get perfect results. The printing speed is maximum of 60mm per hour and that is given in the Z direction, because the X and Y layer is made all at once. The rated power of this machine is 55 watts. Ok, so this machine is perfectly enclosed, and it has a door opening upwards, so we could handle the print. The walls on the sides are made out of coated plastic, which will protect us against UV light from inside, and also from outside in case that you have the printer in sunlight, and you don't want to mess the entire print. The door stays closed with the help of this magnet here. We also have some ventilators on the back for air flow, and the rear side of the printer has some air vents, the power plug and the Wi-Fi antenna. Since the case is made out of metal, it's a very good idea to have the antenna on the outside, otherwise there will be a very poor connection. On the side we have the USB port and the power switch. On the screen while printing you can see the mask of each layer, the amount of layers remaining and the approximated printing time. Inside of the printer we have the resin vat, which is very easy to remove. Just unscrew these nubs here and slide out the vat. The printing bed is also removable. Just untie this plastic nub here and take out the support for easy print remove or cleaning. In my case, this is the first version kit, since this is a new printer, so what you receive might be a little bit different. But anyway, in my case, with this kit you get the printer on one side and some accessories on the other side. So we have the printer user manual. Then we have the power supply and the power cable. A bag with resin filters in order to store the resin back into the bottles. We also get 3 pairs of gloves, which I recommend you to always use. A metal print removal. A bag of tools and accessories with another rubber print removal a USB memory stick, 
And finally we have a protective air filter mask. First we have to attach the door handle. So for that just add a screw and tighten it and the printer is ready. So plug in the power supply on the back power plug and flip on the switch. Now go in the menu and lift the Z-axis. Now you can remove the printing vat from the printer so we could calibrate it. So get the printing metal bed and loose this side screw with the given allen key so now the bed could move freely. Now place the printing bed inside of the printer and tighten the top knob. Now we add a piece of paper for protection on top of the screen. Now go in the menu and select the home icon. The axis will get lower and lower to the home position. Now here slightly push the printing bed downwards and tighten the side screw. So now the level should be calibrated. And to save this configuration, click the Z equal to 0 button and like that you save the new level. And once you do that the bed will automatically go upwards. You can activate the exposure light from the menu and see the uniform of the entire screen from one corner to the other and make sure that it's even. You can test the entire screen turned on or the entire screen turned off. Ok so put back the resin vat. It's time to add the air filter mask and the glass. Now select the color of the resin that you want to use. Take a bit out the vat and fill it with resin, just a few millimeter depending on what you are planning to print. Now place it back inside of the printer and tie the screws. Now I insert the USB memory stick and now we go to the menu, select print and click the example file. The printer starts doing its thing, solidifying each layer. My first print was kind of a fail but I know why, because after calibrating the bed I took it out and it moved a little bit so one side was uneven. So that's why only one print was made, so only one object got printed. So I've made the same print again with grey resin and this time I made sure that the bed was leveled. And this time all the prints turn out ok. And look at all the details. And have in mind this print has almost the size of a simple coin. The 5mm cube is 0.60mm bigger. But even so on one side we can see these tiny numbers perfectly. And each number is just 1mm width. Bridging is also ok. And the 45 degrees ramp was printed with no problems. And on the other ramp we have these very tiny pillars. And the last one looks like just one pixel width which is amazing. But in overall very nice details and compared with any FDM printer these results are incredible. But let's make another test. On the same memory stick you also have the Anycubic slicing software. So install that on your PC. Then in configuration select the printer Mono SE. Then import any STL file which in my case for now is the Eiffel Tower. You can change some settings and then click slice and save this file onto the memory stick. If you want you can also preview each layer. Ok now take this memory stick and place it inside of the printer and you can select that file. Then press the print button and the machine will do its magic. And again incredible results. Once you remove the print you have to clean it with alcohol and then cure it with UV light. So for that you can use a UV flashlight like this one or just leave the prints in direct sun for a few minutes. As you can see the balustrade is very very thin but even so incredible details. In overall the Eiffel Tower turned out pretty good, but we can also see some small errors on the tower legs. Ok so next I've printed two objects at the same time and this was this tower and the baby Yoda model. In the Anycubic software I had to add some supports for the Yoda print. So you can do that manually or the automatic supports and it's very easy to do. Also as you can see this time at the end of the print I wasn't paying attention and the resin vat was getting almost empty. But luckily this was quite at the end of the print, 
so only one small part of the Yoda ear was not printed. So make sure that you pour enough resin otherwise you might ruin the entire print. Ok, so the prints turn out great. The small details on the Yoda are looking good. Both these parts were hollowed before, so we used less resin. And the supports worked very good for the hands and the ears. The supports are very easy to remove. On the other side the tower also has good details and no errors. Sometimes we can see some layers but in overall I got very good results. And by the way you can hollow the parts in the Anycubic software. Ok so the next print was a screw test. In this case we have threads for an M2 and M3 screws and also nuts. The resin that I've used was a little bit old and I didn't have good results. As you can see the side walls are not that smooth. I've made the same print but with new resin and got better results. And I was able to screw the nut and also the screws. Then I've also printed this Einstein head. As you can see we have a change of color in the print. Because around half time I've noticed that the resin vat was almost empty. So I had to pour some more resin in. But for some reason that changed the color a little bit. Maybe I had to shake the resin bottle a bit before pouring more. But even so, the details once again are great. You can't really see the layers on any of the prints. So having a good resolution of 2K will give you good details. In the software I was able to hollow the part and in this way we use less resin. And also in order to empty the unq resin from inside we need to add a hole. And the software also has a tool for that. So that's why this object is hollow and we have this hole here for emptying the resin. Finally I've also printed this ear plug, but this has nothing special. So guys, printing with resin DLP printer is quite messy and you also end up with a lot of residual material. Plastic containers with alcohol and unq resin, latex gloves, resin filters and also putting back the left liquid into the bottle and so on. Also have in mind that this resin is toxic, so you can't really throw the residues in any place. But on the other side you can make very small parts for prototypes with very good details and smooth prints. And the good thing about these printers is that they are very fast and if you make multiple parts the time is the same because the layer for all the prints is made at the same time and the printing time is given by the exposure time and the height of the object and not by the volume. So I like this new printer, especially the design which looks quite nice. The fact that it's old metal gives me more trust and the z-axis rails are good quality which is very important. The print quality is nice having 2K resolution screen. It's very silent, easy to use and has a decent printing area for a resin printer of course, of 130 by 82 mm and a height of 160 mm. The Anycubic software is also easy to use and is straightforward so you don't have to mess around with too many settings. You have some links below with the early bird price now for the first days of the product on the market in case that you want this printer. On the 5 years anniversary page of Anycubic, you can also find the Mono X printer and the Photon X, which are both resin printers, but I haven't tried this yet. Also have in mind that you have support for software or any other service from their website at anycubic.com. I hope that this video will give you a general idea of this new printer and that will help you decide which one to buy. I already have a few projects on my to-do list involving resin 3D printers that require a lot of details and will be impossible to print with a normal FDM printer. So check all the links below if you want to see the user manual and more details about this printer. Remember to subscribe and activate the notification bell. So thanks again and see you later guys.